celebrate, people of God. Sing and shout your praise. For our God comes to us, triumphant and victorious, yet gentle and humble in heart. God comes bringing peace, offering hope and freedom to all who despair. Let's worship God together. Sing to the mountains, sing to the sea. Raise your voices, lift your hearts. This is a day the Lord has made. Let all the earth rejoice. Praise the Lord, all people. Let the sound of our praises be heard. Great is God's power, creator of the universe, whose breath gives life, whose hands create beauty, whose love brings freedom, whose glory fills the earth. To you alone our praise we bring. offer forgiveness, whose suffering brings life, whose death is victory. Great is God's power. Praise the Lord, all people. Let the sound of our praises be heard. good things God has done for us. Praise the Lord all the earth, everywhere, everyone, everywhere. We too will praise the Lord. Our lesson today comes to us from Acts 17, verses 22 through 31. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious, for as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. Now what you worship is something unknown, I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. And he is not served by human hands, as if he needed anything, because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. From one man he made every nation of men, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him, and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by man's design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to all men by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the book of John. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is, sa is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you, from God our Creator, Jesus our Liberator, and the Holy Spirit our Comforter. Amen. In the reading we just heard Lexi share with us, we hear the story of Jesus and his disciples who were in the upper room the night before his crucifixion. And Jesus is sharing a few words of encouragement with his disciples before he leaves. And he's talking about that someone was coming after him. That God was going to give them an advocate. That the Holy Spirit would be with them. That Jesus wasn't going to leave them alone. That the Holy Spirit would come and show them and remind them of all that Jesus had taught them and shown them. And that the Spirit would be with them and in them. And that the Spirit would lead them towards change. Would change them and would change the world. But first, they had to wait. They had to wait, and that there would be this in-between time, a, a holding period, so to speak, between Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection and when the Holy Spirit would show up. Richard Rohr is one of my favorite authors, and he talks about what it means, what he calls, in what he calls liminal spaces. Liminal spaces. Now, the word liminal comes from a Latin word which means threshold. Threshold. And he says that it's when you have left the tried and true. Liminal spaces is when you've left the tried and true, but not have not yet been able to replace it with anything else. That's a liminal space. A liminal space is the crucial in-between time when everything actually happens, and yet nothing seems to happen at all. Do any of you feel that right now? And he goes on to talk about how this waiting period is a space when a lot is going on inside of us. And that's where true trans transformation happens in our lives. You and I, we've all been a part of, had experienced liminal spaces in our lives, haven't we? Whether it's been when we've went through a job change in our life, when we, whether we've moved to a new town or when we've experienced financial hardship or had a time in our life when we weren't happy or we went through a, a divorce or had a conversation with a friend who was going into hospice care or experienced the loss of a loved one or experienced the empty nest for the first time as our kids have left the home or experienced a health diagnosis or retirement. Today, we're experiencing COVID-19, liminal spaces. 
liminal spaces or those threshold moments in our lives, they challenge us to learn how to grow into a better understanding of, of the life and the places that we no longer experience, that, that we no longer experience, that we no longer know as being stable and predictable and, and easy to understand, much like right now. And those liminal spaces, they also invite us to learn and to hold on to our anxiety and, and how to live and learn how to live with uncertainty and also how to trust. Learn how to trust. Be patient and wait. These days I'm finding myself bouncing back and forth between wishing life would go back to normal and knowing that life won't go back to the way it once was. For none of us know what life will be like, what church will be like, what the world will be like on the other side of this. And you know what? We don't need to know. We don't need to know, at least not right now. So what is our role right now in this liminal space? Our role is to allow ourselves Letting ourselves feel all our feels, feel all our feelings, while holding on to each other even from a distance, and giving ourselves and others a lot of grace. Letting ourselves and others feel sad and afraid, but also hopeful. That's what we need to be about right now. Because until you and I, until we grieve, I mean, really feel our losses and grieve and mourn and let go, there won't be any meaningful movement forward in our lives. That's what it means to be in liminal spaces. The life of the disciples after the resurrection. It had become for them a symbol of life's liminal spaces. It's the sacred space where the old world was able to fall apart. And then a new and bigger world was revealed. When the Spirit showed up on Pentecost, the disciples, those early followers, they stepped through a threshold into a new life, into a life that would never and could never be the same again. That's the way of liminal living. My friends, in this grand pause, in this pandemic experience that we're experiencing now, may it be for us a sacred space, a sacred space where the old is left behind and the new, which is welling up deep within us, is a loud space. It's allowed to take shape. My friends, this is the life of death and resurrection. This is the life of Easter people. You know what? Always remember that we are not alone in this. For the Holy Spirit is with us and in us. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us join together in our litany. God, our holy parent, watches over us with love and deep compassion. We are not alone. Jesus, our brother and the pioneer of our faith, leads us by truth in word and deed. We are not alone. The Holy Spirit, our advocate, guide, and constant companion, breathes with us day and night. We are not alone. The community of the faithful exists beyond time and space. We are not alone. The word of hope recedes into the past and marches forward into the future, carrying us through life of its way. We are not alone. Thanks be to God, we are not alone. Let us pray the prayer that the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, receive the benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you with grace and with mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.